Justin, let's talk about your life in the military. Okay. What did God do? Well, for me, you know, before I went in the military, I was picking up my guitar a lot. And so I really thought that going into the military, that my dream of doing music was just out the window. Like it wasn't, I knew that the choices that I had made let, were gonna lead me down a path where music wasn't even an option. And so in 2005, went to boot camp, followed up by A school, and just after, maybe like within three or four months of getting assigned to my first duty station, which was, which was in Texas, they said, hey, we're getting ready to deploy to Iraq. So by um, end of 2006, so in this, this is maybe like within, within three or four months of my first duty station, they told us that. And they said, within the next six months, we're, we're starting to deploy for Iraq. And so... What was going through your mind then? Um, all sorts of things. Because, again, this is, this is, you know, maybe five years after 9-11. And so whenever all of these horrible videos of these killings and capturings were, you know, hitting the Internet. And so there was a lot of fear. Um, there was a lot of regret. Yeah, I, I would say that I regretted a lot of my decisions, you know, at that at that time, because those those were some of the consequences of my decisions that now I'm having to serve out this contract where I wouldn't have to be if I didn't make the decisions I, I did. But that's where I was. And so it was about halfway into my deployment in 2007. It was middle of the summer in Iraq. So it's like the, the heat is unbearable. It's like in the 120s. And I remember it was on a Wednesday and every Wednesday was the chapel was open for service. First, first half of the deployment, I, I never went to chapel, but that night there was just a, like a tug on my spirit to go to the chapel that night. I went and there was maybe a group of 12 of us at this chapel on this, on this particular night. And the chaplain asks all 12 of us if anyone knows how to play the guitar, if anyone can, can volunteer to lead worship. And so I was, I did not want to, I didn't want to raise my hand at first because I'm just thinking, okay, I'm not going to raise my hand. Like, no way God is out here calling me to do this because, you know, at this point I am just upset with myself, the decisions I made, and I'm kind of just, I'm just sulking in that. And so... But I do go back to the call center. I get on the phone and I call my dad and I, I ask him to send me my only guitar, the guitar that they bought for me. I'm 21 at this point, so six years, you know, six years prior, they bought me this guitar that's just collecting dust at home. And, you know, I wonder sometimes what the feelings of my father were hearing the voice of his prodigal son calling home. Saying, Dad, that there's just, there's a, and he, you know, I, I recently got to ask him that too. And what he told me was, you know, we, we were praying for you when you left. And it's like, we, we took a deep breath in, we were praying for you. And then whenever you called and I heard your voice, I knew that God was doing a work and it finally felt like I could exhale. And so coming home from that deployment dealt with a lot of depression and anxiety. I turned to drinking to numb all of the, um, just the things I experienced over there, and then the the feeling of, uh, you know, seeing seeing everyone back home take for granted what I used to take for granted, but now I have a different perspective coming back from a war zone like that. And so anything would make me angry at that time. So I dealt with a lot of anger, and I'll just numb it all with alcohol. And so this is 2008 through 2010. In 2010 is whenever um, a mentor of mine invited me to this Bible study where, again, the Lord was pursuing me again through people. And he said, why don't you bring your guitar and help me lead worship? That's whenever I started writing songs for the Lord. And um, a few years later, I married my wife, Ashley. A couple years after that, I quit my job and I start doing music full time. So now... You know, things are starting to roll 
with the music. Things are starting to almost like a um, like that snowball effect. You know, it just starts moving and you you can't stop it. And so we all know what happened in 2020. Whenever everything shut down, everything started canceling. And I would have to say that you know, five years in doing music full time, I thought I knew that God had called me to do music, but I would say that I was blinded at the same time because I was so focused on making a name for Justin rather than pointing people to Jesus. I still believe that the Lord was glorified in the concerts and, and you know in, in the in the recording sessions and, and the music was pointing to him. But at the same time I was losing sight of trying to get to that next step.